Morning everybody, how are you? Um, liquid sunshine today. <laughs> Somewhere in the world it's sunny. <laughs> That's all you can take out of this today. But hey ho, it's no snowing. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about today, um, this next property I bought um, was 22 North Street. It's my office in Glenorthis. I bought it in 2006 when we first started uh, Century 21. Um, I needed an office, um, and I'll tell you the lessons I've learned from this. This was actually Blockbuster's old office, um, and I had a copy of the lease previously, and I knew Blockbuster's had just obviously gone into administration, um, and it had the leaseholder's name on it. Um, so immediately I ran round to their, their house, their name and address, I, I ran round to their house, and uh, where was it about? I think it was up in Burn Island or Kinghorn, and subsequently um, I knocked on the door. He didn't live there anymore. I think it was George Miller. Hi, George. <laughs> he didn't live there anymore. But subsequently, the next door neighbour across the road said, you looking for George? Oh, aye, I'm looking for George. Yep, I know where he lives. So I then tracked him down to another address, and he had moved again. <laughs> so um, so then, uh, by chance, in the conversation, morning, Francis, um, by chance in the conversation, uh, then that person says, oh, I think he's actually moved to Kirkcaldy. Um, I'll put a chapel. Um, and he's at so-and-so, so by by some way or some reason, I was able to track this guy down to his house and knock on his door after three different house moves um, in that night. Uh, amazing. I don't know how I did it, but what the mind of a man can believe, he can achieve, if that makes sense. If you don't believe it, you'll never achieve it. Uh, and I talk about this uh, quite a lot in my journey, um, and I talked about it in the other now, you know, uh, the reality check is this isn't going to change for you overnight. If you think uh, your journey is going to miraculously change and, you know, if you get into property, it's all going to change for you and you're going to have a huge amount of wealth and it's going to be completely different. Uh, it's not. Um, but you have to understand uh, the more, the higher process you've got to understand is property is just a numbers game. I talk about this in my one to ones with people. Um, I was doing one yesterday with someone. Uh, property is just a numbers game. That is it, plain and simple. You get the numbers right, it'll all fall into place. Everything else is uh, everything else is variable. And what I mean by everything else is variable, it's you and I. Morning, Louise. You and I are variable because our way of thinking changes from day to day, depending on how we feel. Um, I've tagged uh, hashtag Kate Strong in this. Kate Strong is a world champion triathlete. Morning, Amory. Um, and she's absolutely got a fantastic mentality and a fantastic uh, discipline. That's why she's a world champion triathlete. But the thing she talks about on her introduction on her, on her, on her um, website and on her page is immediately she talks about lifting this glass ceiling off of her way of thinking. And what do I mean by that? Well, I talk about it. Hi, Regina. Uh, I talk about it quite a lot um, in one-to-ones with people. And the glass ceiling, uh, the classic example for me and what I was taught is how do you... How did they train the fleas in the circus to jump only so high? How is that possible? Why did they not just jump away and clear off in the flea circus? Well, I'll tell you how they do it. They put the flea in a glass jar. They put a lid on. And that, subsequently, the flea starts to jump. And it starts to hit its head on the lid all the time. Bang, 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 bang. And then eventually the flea goes, wait a minute, this is sore. You know... I'm not going to jump any higher. So the flea actually trains itself to jump just below the lid so it doesn't bang its head on the lid anymore. And then what they do after that is they let the flea out of the jar and the jar is now socially conditioned to only jump so high. It's the same when you come to a pike. You put a pike in a fish tank you know, and they put, a, they put a, just a, a random fish, a goldfish or something, on the other side of the tank. But what they did was they put a glass screen in between the pike and the fish. And every time the pike came round, it went, oh, fish, and darted for the fish to eat it. But it hit the glass. Bang. It came round again. Fish. Bang. Came round again. Fish. Bang. And it did that every single time. And then eventually, the pike went, wait a minute, this is sore. And stopped doing it. He came round, he saw the fish and he went, I'm not going to do that anymore because this is so sore on my head. I'm going to stop doing this. Then they took the glass partition out between the fish and the pike. And the pike never touched the fish ever again. Because it had been socially conditioned. And this is what I talk about most of the time in property. 
and in anything that you do, regardless of what it is, this is what I've been taught by my mentors, if you're wanting to be the top in your career and the top in your profession or anything like that, it's the social conditioning that holds you back. It's everything you've come before you, it's held you back in that position. What makes you think you're so special? That's for the likes of other people. And that's exactly how our social conditioning has started from birth. It's a lot to do with education as well. I'm not going to go into that subject. But you get my drift. That is the whole point. Every single one of us have been conditioned in life to jump only so high. So no matter when we come out of school, we've immediately at a disadvantage because we've been socially conditioned in our brain to jump only so high and we don't think whatever it is, is for the likes of us. Well, I'm here today to tell you that is not the case. You can break your social conditioning and you can jump higher than you expect. So for once, look at the opportunity of taking that glass ceiling off above you and actually jump out of that jar. And I'll see you tomorrow at 7.30.